morning and thank you for joining us for worship today. Um, we're just going to come together and worship and bless the name of the Lord to lift him up high and exalted as, as he's so worthy of. So let's, let's invite his presence into the places where we are this morning where we're worshiping. His presence that fills um, places and also fills our hearts.
because you are worthy, because you are all powerful. And God, we come right now on behalf of our entire country. God, as we saw the horrific events that unfolded this last week, God, we first pray for justice. God, you talk about how much you want to see justice. That's such a great thing. That's such a great theme that we see throughout the Bible. So God, we pray right now for justice in Minnesota. God, that it would be swift. God, that it would be active. God, we also pray for everyone all over the country who is dealing with so much stress and anxiety and frustration and sadness and all the other emotions that are so true and such cuts to the core because these wounds are still open. God, we pray that you would bring healing today. God, that's what you do. You bring healing to us. God, we pray right now that you would refine us. God, as we are celebrating Pentecost Sunday today, a day when people from all over the known world gathered together and saw the Holy Spirit move in such a great and powerful way. We may see, will, will we see unity, God, during this time as you bring everyone together? God, it's such a great thing that the Holy Spirit is, is seen as a fire, is being a, a, a set as a flame, God, and that's seen as a metaphor for who you are. God, we pray that you would refine all the impurities in our lives, God. All the impurities, God, that are in our country, God, that are that people are dealing with right now, that need to be just taken care of by your spirit, God, to move in powerful ways. That we can be the people, God, that we can be the country you want us to be. God, I pray right now for all those who are taking advantage of, of people that are wanting to protest in a, po in a positive way, but then you have these people that are wanting to take advantage of the situation. God, I pray there'd be justice there too. They would not take away from the message that is being said, God, by adding to this mess, God. We know there's just a few people that are taking advantage, God, doing evil things. So God, we pray that you would stop that right now, God. You would put a halt to that. And God, that the people that are looking for real voices, God, would be able to share and share what's going on. God, that would be what's so spoken louder than anything else, God. Not all the craziness of these other people that are not, God, following the right way, that are not wanting to say things that need to be said, God, but the true message can be coming out. God, I pray for all of our first responders that you would keep them safe during this time. The people can see that they are condemning this person just as everyone else is, God. God, I pray that you would keep them safe during this time, that we can have voices be heard, God, that we can see things change because of what you are doing, God. So we know everything else is all talk. But God, you help to make movements. You help to change people from the inside out. So we call on you today, Holy Spirit. Do something great in our country. Help us to see real change. Thank you for all that you're doing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I want to thank you as we welcome you today. And I'm going to pass it off to my definitely better half, Jen, as she allows us to see some great announcements today. Thank you for joining us. And, and through all of, of what we have seen this week, um, what an awesome way to bring in Pentecost Sunday and realize that our God is still sovereign and that he is an awesome God. And that what the Holy Spirit can do through us is, is going to be powerful. Um, if you guys who are joining us here on our live stream today, though, do have prayer requests, we don't just want to have you follow along to the sermon, but uh, if you have a prayer request, we would like to intercede with you. We would like to pray alongside you. So if uh, you could email hopechurchmidway at gmail.com with any prayer requests that, that you have, or maybe somebody else that you know, our prayer team is ready and willing to intercede and to pray alongside of you. If you haven't already done so, we announced this last week that we're going to be uh, having communion during the service. So if you haven't already, please prepare the communion elements um, so that you can join in with us if you would like to do that. Another way that you can also follow along with the sermon and kind of prepare for that is you can go to the YouVersion app and we have our sermon notes as well as announcements and different links to things for our church through the YouVersion app. And if you go to more on the main page of YouVersion and go to events, um, you can search for Hope Church Midway and you can find our sermon notes as well as be able to save that so that you can reference it later. We're, again, we are so thankful for uh, all of the people from the community and the people within our church that have been so supportive of our church um, through their financial giving. And there are two ways to give at Hope Church Midway. You can go to the Hope Church website um, and you can go to the giving link. 
And once you open up the giving link, if you scroll all the way down, uh, you can go to where it says Hope Midway Offerings, and you can put the entire amount that you might like to contribute, and you can email us later to let us know if there is a delineation of where you want certain funds to go, and we will take care of that for you. This makes sure that it goes to the Midway Campus. Also, for those, though, that may have limited access to internet, uh, you can also give directly to the church at 6059 South Archer Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60638. This is the season, despite of what we're experiencing and witnessing um, in the media and in the news and, and just out in front of us, this is a time to also celebrate our graduates. And we are still getting ready to celebrate our graduates next Sunday, June 7th. So if you uh, consider Hope Church Midway your home and either you or you have a graduate within your home in eighth grade, high school, or college, if you could email us at hopechurchmidway at gmail.com and that way we can celebrate alongside. Thank you. Pentecost Sunday. Um, now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Pentecost Sunday, this is a special holiday in the church. It's not as well known as Easter or Christmas, obviously, but it's a very important day. It's a celebration of the birth of the church as we now know it, and also a celebration of the Holy Spirit moving in powerful ways. Now, when we say the term Holy Spirit, a lot of people have different thoughts on and different things that come to their minds when they hear Holy Spirit, from cautious to celebratory. And I pray that by the time that we're done speaking today, that everybody will be celebrating with us. Because the Holy Spirit is who the world needs right now. I believe this message is very timely uh, with everything that's going on in this situation. I think that this will help us to all understand the role that God plays in our daily lives, and especially with things that are happening around our world, he's the one who can actually make the difference. And the world needs to see the change that the Holy Spirit brings. And I believe that Jesus would even agree with this. We hear about this in John 16, 7, says this, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. But if I do go away, then I will send him to you. So Jesus is saying that it was better for us to have the Holy Spirit than for him to be here. That is a bold statement. And if Jesus' words are meant to be believed, then we have to say, what is so important about the Holy Spirit? Why is it so important for us to look at this today? Why are we celebrating Pentecost in the first place? Well, the Holy Spirit has been at work throughout all of history. He is a part of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so he's a part of God, been there from the very beginning. But what is so important about Pentecost, this day that we're celebrating, and why the special attention? Well, to look at this, we have to go all the way back to Leviticus 23. And Leviticus 23 talks about a couple of special days that are happening. First, it talks about Passover, and Passover celebrated when the Jewish people were released from Israel, and they're able to have to be saved and to be free. 
And so it talks about that. They would celebrate with unleavened bread. That's bread that's made without yeast. And they would celebrate this day. And the next day that they talk about in Leviticus 23 is called the First Fruits Festival. Now, what does that mean? Now, let's look at how they celebrated the First Fruits Festival. Leviticus 23.10 says this. Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you enter the land that I am giving you, and you harvest its first crops, bring the priest a bundle of grain from the first cutting of your grain harvest. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest will lift it up before the Lord, so it may be accepted on your behalf. If you look down in uh, verse 13, it talks about a wine offering also being poured out during this time. So what's so important about these special days that's talked about here in Leviticus 23? Well, we have to look at this. The importance of this is seen. Passover reminds us. Passover reminds us that God saves. And the first fruit celebration reminds us of what God gave. So we see Passover, God saves, and then what God gave in the first fruits celebration. So why is this important? Why do we care about this today? Why is it relevant? Why do we need to know about this? Well, if we have to look over at the one of the most famous Passover celebrations of what happened was actually on Good Friday, when Jesus gave everything to save us. That's when he died on the cross for you and for me. And we celebrate that. See, he gave his life to set us free, to take us out of slavery and bondage of sin, to now be in the life that God has for us, the freedom that God has for us. We see that in Passover. The first fruit celebration, the most famous one, is actually Easter. When Jesus rose from the dead, that was the first on the first fruits celebration. And we celebrate what God gave, what he gave us at that time. He gave us this opportunity to have this freedom, to have this time that we are saying we have new life because of what Jesus did. We have new hope because of what Jesus did. We have new opportunities because of what Jesus did at Easter. So we see that Jesus was the Father's plan from the very beginning, even all the way back here in Leviticus. It talks about celebrating this festival with grain or bread and then wine offerings. So we see the first communion was laid out all the way back in Leviticus 23. This shows that Jesus wasn't just an afterthought or God playing catch up to humanity trying to help out. No, this was the plan from the very beginning. But also in Leviticus 23, it shows that the Holy Spirit and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was God's plan from the very beginning as well. Let's read on to see this plan. Leviticus 23, verse 15 says, From the day after the Sabbath, the day you bring the bundle of grain to be lifted up as a special offering, count off seven full weeks. Keep counting until the day after the seventh Sabbath, 50 days later. Then present an offering of new wine, uh, of new grain to the Lord. So this is where we get the term Pentecost from. Pentecost is the 50th day in Greek. That's where that comes from. That's where we get that idea of Pentecost, the 50th day. So they were celebrating counting down from the first fruits festival all the way to Pentecost. And every single day they would count. But what would they be doing during this count? And why was this count so important? Why is, what does this matter to us today? Well, when they would do this count, it was called the counting of the Omar. So every single day, they would do this. They would pray, they would recite a blessing, they would recite the count, say this is day two uh, of the Feast of Weeks, this is the day two. Um, and then they would read Psalm 67, and they would end in prayer. But why would they read Psalm 67? This kind of seems kind of somewhere out of nowhere in there, but they would read that every single day. And the reason that they would read Psalm 67 is because, again, he says, count off seven full weeks, there's seven verses, says count off 49 days, there's 49 words in Psalm 67 in Hebrew, and then you would, then after that was done, you would celebrate Pentecost on that 50th day. And so that's why they would read Psalm 67, because it works so perfectly with the seven verses, with the 49 words. They said, man, this is such a great thing for us to celebrate, but I know God was doing something more in there. And let's see exactly what that means when we look at Psalm 67 ourselves. It says this, may God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile on with favor on us. We have a pause. May your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy because you've governed the nations with justice and guide the people of the whole world. Another pause. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may the nations praise you. 
then the earth will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us, and the people all over the world will fear him. It's hard to miss the theme within the psalm. Now, this is a blessing over all nations and over all nationalities. That's what this is. So every single time when they're counting Omar, when they're looking through this, they're saying we want everybody to be blessed. All nations and all nationalities, we want them all to be blessed. But that's not what we really think when we think about the day of Pentecost. When we celebrate Pentecost, we don't think about nations and nationalities and, and what God wants to do in there. Those aren't the things that we think about. No, we usually pause and, and we think about the disciples and saying, well, this is the day that the church was sent out and the disciples got power from God and the Holy Spirit moved. But what was Jesus saying would be the importance of Pentecost? Let's look at his own words in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, getting the disciples ready for the day of Pentecost. So during the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways he was actually alive, and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. So what's he doing here? Well, again, this is the time when they were counting the Omar, these 40 days. There's, again, 50 days in total, but these 40 days before Jesus ascends, he's there with them, and he's talking about the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? This is God ruling in our lives, what the church is supposed to be. He's explaining to them, this is what the church is going to be. This is what it's going to look like when I'm able to move in powerful ways. When God is able to move in powerful ways, this is what we want the church to be. Continue on, verse 4. It says, once he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father send you the gift he has promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. See, there was this anticipation that happened with counting the Omar. Every single day, they were anticipating to the day of Pentecost. And Jesus is saying, I've been with you for 40 days, explaining what's going to happen on the day of Pentecost, how I want the church to get ready to reach out. But he's saying to them, well, I want you to anticipate what the Holy Spirit's going to do when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. These next days, just as much as you're anticipating the day of Pentecost, I want you to anticipate what the Holy Spirit is going to do. And why should they anticipate? Acts 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. See, it's hard to miss the theme of Jesus' teaching as well, of getting ready for the Holy Spirit. To be a blessing for nations and nationalities. Saying, I'm wanting you to be a blessing. I'm wanting you to share this with others. Just as Psalm 67 was looking at all the people of the world, Jesus says the same thing. I want you not just to worry about yourself, I want you to reach out to every single person, to look at every single one throughout the entire world. I want you to be a blessing. This is why the Holy Spirit is coming, not just to help you, but to help out everyone in such great ways. See, the Holy Spirit helps us to get past man-made barriers and become a family. It's so important. Galatians 3.28 talks about what the Holy Spirit does in this blessing of nations and nationalities. It says, There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Isn't this who the world needs now? We need the Holy Spirit to move in powerful ways. If people can see we are all one, we are all together because of what God has done in our lives. There should not be any division at all. Anybody who says that they're a Christian and has division amongst anyone else is not following the Bible. There's no other way to say it. There cannot be any division. Why? Because the Holy Spirit helps us to come together, helps us to get past these differences that we have to come together in great ways, to be a blessing to all nations and all nationalities. Why? Because the Holy Spirit brings unity in diversity. It's not that God doesn't want us to be diverse. No, he loves the diversity of his household, of his church. In fact, it talks about it, that we're all different. He's happy about it, that we're all different, and all of us are important together. And he's bringing this unity in diversity. He wants us to be uniquely who we are as one. It's such a great thing. I, I, I could say that the one thing I'm very happy about for us at Hope Church Midway is we are multicultural. We don't look at it and say, hey, we want to be a multicultural church just to say it. We just are because we accept everyone as God accepts us. There is not a barrier. There isn't barriers that are put up. There isn't ways that we're looking at people in different ways. Why? Because the Holy Spirit brings us together. He unifies, he unifies all of us 
together in one, even in the midst of our diversity. See, Psalm 67 talks about the blessings that the nations can have. Acts actually shows how it's attained through the Holy Spirit. We can talk all day long of the changes that we want to see, but the Holy Spirit allows it to happen. But what power does the Holy Spirit provide to bring this kind of unity? Because this is what the world is looking for. How can we actually see it? Galatians 5.22 talks about this. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Isn't this who the world needs now? These are the types of things that we need to unify us all, to bring us together. We need these types of things that can't come from anywhere else. It only comes in to, from, because of the Holy Spirit. He's the one who initiates inner change. Who the Holy Spirit is. He's the one who initiates inner change. That's a person who can allow us to have new eyes, to see things in new ways. And we can call for change in systems and people and politics, but the culture won't change if hearts don't change. There's not a policy that could be written that would have stopped the tragic events in Minnesota. Those policies were already written. That guy went against his training altogether. It was a horrible thing, and everyone could see this. This is a horrible thing. The only thing that could have changed that man in any way, shape, or form is the Holy Spirit moving in his life. God moving in him. There is nothing else that would have changed that. The only way that we could change anybody's thinking, how anybody acts, is through the Holy Spirit. It's working on the inside. Things on the outside can only make people do stuff on the outside that just looks like there's real change. But the Holy Spirit moves on the inside to create real, lasting change. What we really need. And that's why Jesus was so excited. He says, no, this is an opportunity for the whole world to be as God intended it. Together, united, reaching out together to the whole world so we all can be as one. We can all be together. This is what God does. Anything else is all talk. Any other kind of change that people call for is talk in systems if it's not God working on the inside. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to work on the inside to change lives, to open eyes in great ways. So we can say, well, the Holy Spirit is bringing blessing for the nations, unity, and change. But how is this showed in, in Pentecost? Especially the first Pentecost mentioned in Leviticus 23. How is this shown that God is doing all these things. How can we see this for sure? Well, let's look back at Leviticus 23. It says, From wherever you live, bring two loaves of bread to be lifted up before the Lord as a special offering. Make these loaves from four quarts of choice flour and make them with yeast. And they will be an offering to the Lord from the first of your crops. Now you might say, well, this is how they celebrated Pentecost. What does this have to do with anything we just talked about. How does this have to do with unity? How does this have to do with nations? How does this have to do with change? It just sounds like they're traveling to Jerusalem to give some bread to a priest to celebrate a harvest. It doesn't seem like this makes any kind of sense on anything else that you said. It seems like I'm trying to shove some things in. I know that can seem this way, but let's look and see what this word says. I think this is going to be so encouraging to you. It's going to be an encouraging thing for us to say to other people at this time when this country needs so much healing and so much change. See, the Jewish leaders would have caught something that, would have, that we might miss when we first read this. They would catch something right away, right when it was said there in Leviticus 23. It says, I want you to bake bread that's leavened or that has yeast. Now, any Jewish person would say, well, hold, hold, hold on. That, that does not make sense because any kind of offering you're supposed to give to God is supposed to be unleavened bread, not having any yeast in it at all. Why? Because yeast was seen as influence. And almost all the time it was used, it was a negative influence. It was usually seen as sin or some other kind of negative influence on the people. And that's why he said, I don't want you to have any yeast. I want you to have no influence. I want you to follow God alone. And so almost all of their festivals, Passover, every other festival, any other time that they did an offering with God, had to be unleavened bread or bread made without yeast. But here, God specifically says, bring two things of bread with yeast. This is fascinating. To celebrate the harvest. This is what I need you to do to celebrate the harvest. But what harvest are they talking about? Jesus talks about this in Matthew 9, 37. It says, He said to his disciples, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into the field. Jesus used this terminology often in the Bible to describe the harvest. He's saying the harvest I'm caring about is not of your crops, is of people having lives and hearts changed. 
and coming to know me, and I know them, and I can move inside their lives. That's the harvest he's looking for. And Jesus said exactly where the fields were in Acts 1.8. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now this is so important for us to see right now. What Jesus is saying, what he said in Acts 1.8, is so important. He was saying for the whole earth, but he specifically said something that again would have stood out, and, and stood out to the Jewish listeners. Jerusalem, they're like, all right, great. Our hometown, got that, right where the temple is. Judea, all around the area, that would be like Chicago and then Chicago land. Right? And then he said Samaria, that's when people would have paused. Why? Because they had people that were warring. There was a, a race issue that was happening between the Samaritans and the Jewish people all the time. And they didn't like each other. They had a lot of issues that were there. There was a lot of animosity that was found within them. And Jesus says, no, no, there's not to be a split part anymore. Because the Holy Spirit's going to empower you, to you to come together. And that is such a great thing for us to see. Jesus was intentional about this, saying this is what the Holy Spirit is going to do. The harvest is not just going to be the people that look like you, that think like you, that believe like you. No, I want everyone. I want the whole world to come together because I know what this world can be if we all come together and the Holy Spirit moves inside of hearts. I know the changes that can be done that are only done through the Holy Spirit. And so he was so excited and told him, wait and anticipate what I'm going to do to bring reconciliation. And we see the Holy Spirit helps to bring in this harvest. And this offering shows exactly what this harvest is to look like. Bread made with yeast. Why is that so important? Romans 15, 16. This is Paul speaking. He says, I am a special messenger from Christ Jesus to you Gentiles. These are people that aren't of Jewish origin. So I bring you the good news so that I might present you as an acceptable offering to God made with holy by the Holy Spirit. This is so powerful. Paul is saying, you know, I'm not just here for the people who are from one ethnic group or from one set group. No, I'm, I've been called for everyone, called out to reach out to everyone. Now, the Israelites from the Old Testament days on were all called to be missionaries, to allow God to know, to allow other people to know who God is throughout the entire world. They were all called that. But the Pentecost, Pentecost shows the difference here. So the Holy Spirit announces he's accessible. It already said, hey, I want you to be a missionary. I want you to share out with other people. But the Pentecost shows the Holy Spirit announces he's accessible to everyone. How does he announce this? How does he announce this? Well, this is what we see. Regardless of background, culture, community, they're presented as accessible. Why? Because they were having bread made with yeast. And when they had the bread made with yeast, it was showing that it wasn't the purity that we saw. It was other things that were inside. He said, no, no, I want to show you that I have it for everyone. I want everybody to be a part of this. That's why Paul said, you're a, now an offering that's acceptable. So when the priest would come out and we lift up one of the two breads, that represented the Gentiles saying, no, you are now a part of this. Not just the unleavened people. No, this is a blessing for the people that aren't from Jewish heritage as well. Again, this is exactly what Jesus was talking about when he said to reach out to the entire world. They were celebrating it from Leviticus on without even realizing it at the time. That God was going to help to bring the whole world together through the Holy Spirit. And it was represented in the bread that they shared. That anybody could come together and see the accessibility that God has. And why are we having this accessibility? Because of Jesus' work on the cross, it gives us access to a loving God. See, before you had to go through the temple, you had to go through the priest. There was a reason you had to go through Judaism itself. Why? Because only those people could do it because of the sacrificial system. But Jesus died on the cross and made it open for everyone. So he was so excited. He said, anticipate this. This has now got the power. Because of what I did on the cross, you can now share with everyone. And everyone can see the temple. Everyone can be a temple. In fact, I'm going to live in them. Then the Holy Spirit is going to live in their life. This is exciting words that Jesus is saying. He says, this is representing of who you are. And having this time and, and, and seeing, being a part of the harvest that God has for everyone, whether they're Jew, Gentile, anything, they are now a part of this harvest. That's what the first one represented. So when they lifted that up, they would see that. But again, there are two loaves, not just one loaf. So what did this second loaf represent? When they would hold up the second loaf, what did that one represent? Well, that represented the influence of the church. As we said, we celebrate Pentecost Sunday not just as a celebration of the Holy Spirit coming, but also seen as a birth of the church, of how it is now in the modern days. When everything shifted, when the temple system was no more demanded anymore, and the Holy Spirit was moving in powerful ways. 
You see, yeast was sometimes, as we said, it's always was showing influence. Most of it negative, but sometimes it was shown as being positive. And Jesus even pointed this out in Matthew 13, 33. It says this, Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman is used in making bread. Even though she only put a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated, permeated sorry, every part of the dough. It's so important for us to see. He's talking about the positivity of yeast. It shows that allowing the Holy Spirit to work on the inside has great effect on the outside. For them to see that this bread is saying this is the positive thing, just this little bit of yeast can have such an effect on everything on the outside. So little small that it's put inside, but it's affecting the entire dough, the positive effects that yeast can have. And this is what shows us as a church. There can be positive effects and the Holy Spirit in our lives. See, God's wanting us to see the great things that he wants us to do. Not just so we can see things, but that we can do things. I'm proud of what the church has done throughout history by not just seeing things that were wrong, but actually doing something about it. The reason slavery was abolished in our country was because of the church. It was Christians coming together saying, this is not biblical whatsoever. The Spirit has, has convicted us. And all the other people that were using the verses out of context, they weren't Christians. They were just trying to use the Bible to set their own thing. But the people who actually looked at the Bible and saw what it said, they were convicted by the Holy Spirit and said, we need to make this change. The same people who saw people who were uh, poor that were not having educations and said, we need to start free education for everyone. That was the church. The same people who said that there are so many people dying from lack of health care and said, we want to help out of this. One out of every six hospitals is church-owned today. Why? Because it started with the church. Because they said it should be access to be available to everyone. Why? Because it helps us out. Because the Holy Spirit works on the inside and has a great effect outside. There is a change that happens. It only happens when God's people look around and say, I want to see a difference. A great example of this is actually taken from my own family. My, my father reminded me of this great story from my great-grandfather. He was one of the first five police officers who started the police union back in New York in the 30s. And when it started up in the 1930s, he pushed against the union and other people there at the time to get the first African-American officer in New York put on that, uh, put inside the precinct. And so he really pushed for this. Because of his push for this and him also trying to desegregate the different um, sections of the Nazarene church and try to bring them together, people were sh throwing bricks through his windows. He had a shotgun that was pulled on him, and he even had someone shoot at him through his driver's side door, but God protected him. Why? Because he was doing God's work. And this police officer said, I cannot just see that there's problems that are happening. I need to be a part of the solution. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was speaking to him. See, this is what we're talking about. Not just saying we need to see change. Not just saying, oh, we need to see something different. No, but God moving in our lives to have real change, lasting change, that affects far beyond anything that we could ever do. And yes, there might be some cost to us, as there was towards my great-grandfather. But the, what was worth it is so much more. And this is what the Holy Spirit allows us to do. This is what the Holy Spirit speaks into our lives and shares to us all. May we allow God to work on the inside and have an effect on the outside. Now this is the important thing that we can see. It's this little bit of yeast working through. Imagine what the Holy Spirit can do. See, when they lifted this and said, yes, this was the Gentiles, and the other part of it was for the church, the other interesting thing of them lifting up bread that had yeast is yeast was normal in bread. They only didn't put yeast in when they were doing ceremonies, when they were doing offerings to God. That's the only time they didn't use yeast. They used yeast often. In fact, most of our things have yeast even to this day. And so it was a common, everyday thing. So what is God trying to tell us in that? Well, the Holy Spirit moving in our lives in powerful ways should be a common, everyday thing. It shouldn't be something special. It shouldn't be something that we just pray for when we see the country having major issues should be something that we just pray for and say, God, we need to see something now, and so we need you to move in powerful ways. No, every single day, it should be ordinary for us to reach out and say, Holy Spirit, I want you to move. I want you to move in powerful ways, because only you can bring the change that we desperately need. And that's why we call out to you. It should be an everyday thing. Imagine a world where we allow the Holy Spirit to make these changes in our lives. Imagine what our lives will look like our families would look like, our communities would look like. Imagine what our country would look like if we did this. Let's look at these things. 
But we are blessings to all nations and nationalities. We're experiencing unity and diversity. We're initiating real interchange, not just talking about it, but initiating real interchange as we're able to have access to God and see his work on the inside affecting those on the outside. This is what God allows us to see. This is what the Holy Spirit does. Isn't this what we're praying for right now? Isn't this everything? If we were doing these things, we're allowing the Holy Spirit to move in our lives and in our country and to heal us, and we have these things happening, would our country look a lot different? Wouldn't all these things be so much different? And so when we're praying for God to do something great, we're praying for God and saying, we need you right now. We need you to move in powerful ways. We need to see your justice. We need to see your change. We need to see your help. When we're praying for this, what we're really praying for is, Holy Spirit, we need you. We need a day of Pentecost. We need to be baptized in the fire of the Holy Spirit. See, every single one of us gets the Holy Spirit. The moment we say, I'm following you, God, the Holy Spirit comes to our life. But remember, Jesus said there's something different. He said that I want in Acts 1. He says, no, you're going to get fire when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. There is something different that happens. So I want you to be baptized. So what do we see here right now? What does this mean in our lives? What shows us, by all this being in Leviticus 23, this was God's plan from the very beginning. God is wanting our whole world to be healed and, and to be coming together as a result, not of just some horrible actions, not just because people are crying out for it and are finally fed up in many ways. No, this is God saying, this is my plan from the beginning. This is him saying, I want to see a change in your life from the very beginning. I mean, think of all the beautiful things we see there in that Leviticus passage. Passover. I'm wanting to save the world. This is what I'm wanting to do. I'm wanting to save it. Then we see God using the first fruits festival. I want you to be happy for what I've done. I want you to be excited for what I've done in your life. To be anticipating and saying, you know, we have new freedom found in Christ Jesus. We have an opportunity to see us because he rose from the dead. It's not just that he was a sacrifice and saved us, but no, we have something new because of what Jesus did. And then right after that, he says, yeah, and then get prepared because the whole world is going to change when the Holy Spirit moves in Pentecost. The whole world shifts. People that didn't feel to be a part of the church before are now going to be a part. And the church is going to have a great influence in the rest of society. We're not separate from society saying we're going to pray for society. No, we help to change society. By the Holy Spirit moving in our lives, just as that little bit of yeast, we can have great effect on what God is doing. So as we prepare and pause and think about these festivals, before we take communion to celebrate that first fruits, and if you need to prepare, please have all your elements ready. I want to pray right now for those who are watching right now who don't have a relationship with God, who don't realize they could be a part of that church. The reason we celebrate the birth of the church is because they could be a part of it. Because of what Jesus did on the cross and how he rose again, now they are a part of that. That shifts it. They're a part of that harvest festival of Pentecost. So we celebrate. It's the harvest. And God wants you to be a part of that. That's what Jesus' goal is for you. And so I'm going to pray for you right now as we prepare our hearts to take communion. God, I thank you so much for we will see the change that you make. And as we pause right now, Jesus, to think about your sacrifice and how we can celebrate what that means in our life today. I pray for those who don't have a relationship with you right now, who need to have that relationship. Say, I need to follow you because all the other changes that we can try to make in society are nothing. If I'm not changed, then how can I be the change that you want me to be? If I'm not changed from the inside out, if I'm not saying I want Jesus to be Lord of my life, I want to be a part of that kingdom, having the kingdom of God work in my life, to him to rule in my life, to me to follow him, to see the changes that he wants to make in our world. Because every single change that the Holy Spirit said, I'm agreeing with all those things. I want to see all these things happen. But it starts with me. Me saying, God, let me be a part of that change. So God, I pray for that one right now. They'll say, God, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you came. I believe you died. As we they celebrate in Passover, that you died to save us. That you saved me from my sins. I know that I've messed up. I know I've gone my own way. And God, I pray that you would forgive me right now. But I know that your sacrifice on that cross saves me and allows me to have freedom. 
And God, as we're celebrating, we're about to celebrate the First Fruits Festival right now, God, of remembering what you did as you rose from the grave. God, I pray for everyone who's praying right now, they can say, I have new life because Jesus lives. Now I can live new, a new person, born again, having a whole new life because of what Jesus did, rising from that grave. So God, I pray right now they will not allow any guilt to overtake them, God, but they can realize that if they've asked for forgiveness, God, they believe in who you are. You've made it so simple to start a relationship because you love us so much. I pray that they'll see they are a part of the harvest that Pentecost talks about. They are a part of your church. God, the eternal church, a worldwide church, wanting to see you move in powerful ways, Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you're doing in lives. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. We're going to pause right now, and like I said, we're going to be taking communion. So whatever bread you have, let's prepare it. And let's just remember what it said way back in Leviticus 23. When it was first talking about what event for the First Fruits Festival. It says this, that we lift it up before the Lord so that it may be accepted on our behalf. See, Jesus' body was accepted on our behalf. He was a sacrifice. And so we remember what happened with his body, but he was accepted on there, on our behalf. And how he loves you and I so much. Let's pray and take this together in celebration. God, we thank you so much that, God, you were lifted up. God, that you did things on our behalf to make a difference, to make a change. We thank you, God, that you were lifted up so you can lift us up. God, to having a new life that's only found in you. We thank you so much. May we never take this for granted. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Let's partake together. See that the next thing that we see is within the wine. And again, that was also celebrated on the first fruits celebration. They would pour the wine on the altar. As it says in verse 13, they would pour it out. And Jesus' blood was poured out for us. Why? Because he loves you so much. He gives you a new opportunity. But again, it's a first fruit celebration. We're not just remembering what he did on the cross. Remembering that he rose again. That that blood that was shed then it still has the same power because Jesus lives still. So let us take this together, remembering that we have direct access to God. The church is different because Jesus gave us the way. Let's take us together. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for what you did, spilling out your blood as an offering for us. God, on our behalf, that we take us a great celebration. God, that we can have direct access to you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Let's take it together. Right before the uh, worship team plays right now, I want us to think about that gift that God has and the celebration that it means. It means that the whole world needs the Holy Spirit right now. We need to see the change that only He can make. You might not know what to expect when asking for the Holy Spirit to move in your life. And on the day of Pentecost, we're celebrating that we're all now a part of this church. It doesn't matter where we come from and he wants to do great things. When we're celebrating this today, I want us to think about this verse. Acts 13, 52 says, and all the believers were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. See, Pentecost was always a celebration of the harvest that God was gonna be doing, the harvest in his church, and also what the church was gonna be doing. It was always said as a celebration, but the important thing about this verse, it would just happen after such hard times, such struggles that the believers were going through major societal issues that had just happened and they were just going through so many hard times and as they're leaving, they have this verse that they say, and the believers were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they knew what the Holy Spirit could do and they say, it's worth us reaching out. It's worth us reaching out beyond ourselves to other people. It might seem overwhelming. It might seem impossible for us to see the change that needs to happen, but no, God will work through you just as he works through a little bit of yeast to work through all the dough. He can work through you. So I'd say right now as we're preparing our hearts, pray and say, Holy Spirit, I want to be baptized by you. I want you to change my life continually. That's what I love about this verse is be filled with the Holy Spirit, continually filled. It's not just a one-time thing. They were always praying for more of the Holy Spirit because we need to continue to see the more of the change that God wants. So as they pray, right, as they play right now, right where you're at, say, God, I want to see the change that you want to bring. Work in my heart. Work in my life. 
fill me up. I, I might not know what to expect. The disciples didn't know what to expect either. They just said, I want what God tells me to anticipate. That's what I want. Just ask. I guarantee you're going to be in so amazed and so happy with what God did. You'll be filled with joy from the Holy Spirit as well. Let us seek him out in prayer.
God, we pray right now for that love that only the Holy Spirit can bring. God, that change that only the Holy Spirit can do. God, we pray right now, God, that we will all be a blessing to nations and nations and nationalities, God, as you call for, anticipating the day of Pentecost. God, I pray as well that we will experience unity even in the midst of our diversity. God, help to bring us together, not to see more separation. We know that's only what the enemy wants, to see us even more separated than we already are. God, we pray that you would bring unity that's only found in you, Holy Spirit. God, we pray that you would bring and initiate real inner change. God, there's so much talk being done right now, but God, only you can change us from the inside out. Only you can make the change that actually is lasting change that we need so bad, that we need so desperately. God, we pray right now that we, everyone will realize they have access to a God who wants to speak into our lives to bring that inner change to help to change things on the outside. And we have the access because of what Jesus did on the cross. And we have the Holy Spirit moving inside us. We are able to move. God, you are wanting to move in powerful ways. Allow us to have the wisdom that only comes from you to share that love and to see the change that you want to see in this world. The kingdom of of God, what you shared about, I said, this is why we should anticipate the kingdom that I want to do, what I want this world to look like. It's so great, it's so beyond what you could ever possibly imagine, and you have the ability to do it through the Holy Spirit, through the power that he brings. So God, I pray that we won't just pray here on Pentecost, but every single day we'll pray for you to continue to fill us up, that we can continue to see change. Lord, you have such great plans for us as a country, God, for us as a city, God, for us as a world, God, but we know that only happens when we're listening to you, when we see the change we desperately need. Thank you so much for helping us, for giving us a way, for always being there with us. God, and for celebrating the harvest, God, of so many different people, God, and showing what the church can actually do when we're listening to you. We thank you for this day of Pentecost, and we celebrate it fully in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. We thank you so much. Continue to pray and to see what God's going to do. We'll see you on Tuesday at 7. Again, for any graduates, please send us any of your information so we can celebrate it next week at our graduation uh, um, ceremony. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. Continue to pray that God would fill you and the Holy Spirit would do great things.